That's weird. Does it go ho There's like a whole bunch of people surrounding my house. <laughs> So I was recently inspired by the TikTok congressional hearing that happened a few days ago where the most technologically illiterate people in the world grilled the CEO of TikTok on matters pertaining to privacy, how Wi-Fi works, what an app is, what an app on the a phone is, and it was great. They got a lot of stuff figured out. I'd like to direct your attention to the screen for a short video if you don't mind. Mr. Show, that video was posted 41 days ago. As you can see, it is captioned me as F. And I'm glad that we're re we're reeling in that, that China stuff. What? Um, so I'm here today to give my opinion and talk about something that I know absolutely nothing about. <coughs> Astrology. Astrology is one of those things that, um, Damn me, yeah, I just never really got into it. I don't even know my big three, but it's not for lack of trying. I did try to figure it out, but my parents, they don't know what time I was born. Which, it's something that you would think you would know about a child. Like you would, I feel like you would know that, but they don't. What I do know is that my birthday is July 27th, which makes me a Leo. I do carry some pride for being a Leo because I feel like it's the best, like, is it not kind of like, like it's not a Gemini. Mm -hmm. But from what I've heard about Leos is we are um, attention seeking monsters. Oh. And I do this. So, yeah. So I found this website that talks about like the personality traits in a very succinct and um, Possibly false. I don't know. It's the website Allure, Allure, Allure. And based upon that, I'm gonna give a book recommendation because I don't know. It why not? So I thought we would start out with the current reigning zodiac. -er. I guess this is a lot like Chinese New Year, like Gung Pei Fat Choi, where it doesn't start on January first. It starts after. So the astrological year started on this first day of spring, March twenty first, which is something I didn't know. So not only are we current but we are chronological. So according to Allure, Aries love to be number one. Naturally, this dynamic fire sign, <coughs> this dynamic fire sign is no stranger to competition. Bold and ambitious, Aries drive headfirst into even the most challenging situations. And they'll make sure they're, all, they're always come out on top. <laughs> Good for you guys. So what really stuck out to me here was bold and ambitious. So I immediately started racking my brain for books that are bold and ambitious. And in fact, the most recent book I read was one of the most bold and ambitious books I've ever read. It's Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. Now, a while ago, I read The Pisces by Melissa Broder. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a huge fan of like the beginning, but like the last half, it got, I think it just got a bit too erotic for my taste. And it was kind of disappointing because up until that point, it was so funny and I was enjoying it so much. But going into this, I feel like I knew what I was getting in for more. And I will say it did the exact same thing. The last bit, all of a sudden the sex just jumped up a couple notches. However, this follows a comedian living in Los Angeles. I think she is like mid twenties and she struggles with an eating disorder, but then she develops a relationship with a woman working at her favorite yogurt shop who kind of messes with her routine regarding food. She has a very strict routine for the way she eats and what she eats. She gets involved with this woman's family. She herself is a lapsed Jew while this woman and her family are Orthodox. And she becomes a little bit obsessed with this woman and her family. While I was reading it, I I thought, damn, Freud would love this. Like Sigmund Freud would eat this shit up because it seems like Melissa Broder writes her characters from the perspective of their id. Like she writes them from their very primal thoughts and instincts. So uh, understandably, it can get kind of, um, I don't want to say gross, but human beings are gross. It's very descriptive. She loves talking about a, a, a wet sopping 
it's wild. Like, it's crazy. More than anything, it's funny. Don't take it too seriously. I realize that recommending a book that is entirely about a woman with an eating disorder for those who might not want to read that, I recommend the Pisces because I feel like it has like the exact same effect. Oh, Oprah read it. The next one is Taurus and it says, What sign is more likely to take a six hour bath followed by a luxurious Swedish massage and decadent dessert spread? Why Taurus, of course. Who wrote this? <laughs> like their celestial spirit animal, Taurans enjoy relaxing and serene bucolic, which is like not a word. It sounds like bubonic, which is not pleasant. Um, bucolic environments surrounded by soft sounds, soothing aromas, and succulent flavors. So reading this, I immediately thought of Robin Wall Kimmerer and her books, Braiding Sweetgrass, as well as Gathering Moss. Robin Wall Kimmerer is an ecologist and indigenous woman, and she, like, her vibe is just so right. Both of her books that I've read are collections of essays, Gathering Moss, centers around moss, while Braiding Sweetgrass is more just, like, everything. And they're both filled with personal essays and indigenous cultures and indigenous histories in America. There's essays on environmentalism, but she writes in such, like her writing is so poetic. Each word is so intentional. The vibe is so great. A vibe that is cultivated in such a peaceful and serene way, but you'll end up learning stuff too. The next is Gemini, which... <laughs> My heart goes out to you, truly. I don't know what I would do. Y'all are hated on so much, I truly don't know why. <laughs> so according to this website, Geminis are spontaneous, playful, and adorably erratic. What the fuck? Gemini is driven by its insatiable curiosity. Appropriately symbolized by the celestial twins, this air sign was interested in so many pursuits that it had to double itself. That's what I've heard, is that y'all are like two-faced? But isn't everyone, like isn't everyone kind of two-faced? I feel like you kind of have to be in order to be a person. Although what I kind of zeroed in on here was Gemini is driven by its insatiable curiosity. And recently, Listen, <laughs> recently I started a series, a sci-fi series that has driven me to, the, the, I think it has like indefinitely driven me to be curious about what's up there. I think this series is called The Remembrance of Earth's Past Days, something like that. I've only read the first one, The Three-Body Problem, although I'm going to start the second one, The Dark Forest, soon. <sighs> Speechless. Like, I, I can't speak about this book because it will send me on, like, an acid flashback. It's a mix of a few things. It starts out set in the 60s during the Chinese Cultural Revolution, but then it jumps forward to the present, and it's like... It's like... It's so hard for me to talk about this because I don't know what happened, or like... <laughs> I think mainly what it is, is I don't want to give anything away. When I went into it, I had no clue what it was, what it was about. I, I really didn't know anything. I think that's like the way to read this book. Just no clue what to expect because it takes you on this journey with science, mainly physics and aliens and different star systems. The namesake of the book, the three body problem, there's this star system that's very close to us called, or not close, like relatively called Alpha Centauri and it is a three-body star system. The alien civilization. See, this is a spoiler what I'm about to say. So it's hard, like the alien civilization ha is on a planet in this star system. That star system, however, is extremely erratic and it's not, you know, a planet, it would have a hard time raising a civilization. So it, it creates a little bit of uh, conflict when we learn about each other. That's all I'm gonna say. Barack Obama read it too, and he said it's wildly imaginative. So, 
The next one is cancer. Cancers are represented by the crab. Ew, that's so gross. I knew y'all were nasty. I knew it. So these individuals seamlessly weave between the sea and shore, representing cancer's ability to exist in both emotional and material realms. Cancers are highly intuitive and their psychic abilities manifest in tangible spaces. Whatever. Um, the book that I the book that I am going to recommend is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Field. This book is, first of all, beautifully written. This is about a married couple, Leah and Miri. And the way that it's, listen, listen, seamlessly weaves between the sea and the shore. This book is told from the perspective of Leah and Miri, and it flips back and forth. Now, I, is it, I believe it's Leah. She's like a marine biologist or something. I don't know, she's stuck in a submarine. Her wife, Miri, her perspective is in the future after Leah is rescued, taking after Leah after this very traumatic and mysterious event that her wife has just gone through. There is a little bit of surrealism involved, which fits as well because it says that you, you cancers apparently have psychic abilities. <laughs> I think it's like the perfect book for a cancer. For a water sign, there's so much water in this book. It's insane. Okay, the next one is... <sighs> I, I, I almost said arguably, but I think I... Objectively, the best sign. Uh, Leo. So it says here, roll out the red carpet because Leo has arrived. Me? What? Passionate. Loyal and infamously dramatic. In, okay, yeah, like in some instances. Leo is represented by the lion and these spirited fire signs are the kings and queens of the celestial jungle, so. Like, bow down, <laughs> bow down, bitches. <laughs> um, they're delighted to embrace their royal status, vivacious, theatrical, I can put on a good show. And fiery. <laughs> okay, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Leo's love to bask in the spotlight and celebrate dot 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 well, comma, themselves. <laughs> Stop. 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 Stop it. So for some reason, what really spoke to me here was not really a book per se, but two authors, Joan Didion and Eve Babbitt, specifically for Joan Didion, Slouching Towards Bethlehem, as well as Play It As It Lays. And mm, I read Blue Nights as well by her, but I don't think I would, I don't think I would group that in here. It's about like her dead daughter, so. And then for Eve Babbitt, it's Slow Days, Fast Company, The World, The Flesh, and LA. They celebrate Los Angeles and celebrities, and they have such sunny dispositions. <laughs> I mean, this one is just exaggeration. Leo's love, like we love to lie, or at least I do. And this is like, I don't know, I've heard that it's like her memoir, but it also is known that she like exaggerated the shit out of it and made her life appear a lot more glamorous and dramatic than it really was. And she's an author that I would love to read more from. I just, just haven't really gone around to it. Also Joan Didion. I would love to read all of their books. I think they represent Leo, Leo Hood very well. The next one is Virgo, which like, I'm not, I think I would be like really offended if someone wrote this about me. <laughs> you know the expression, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. I don't know that expression. I've never once heard that. I don't even think that is an expression. You're just making up a phrase and being like, you know the expression. <laughs> Virgos are logical, practical, and systematic in their approach to life. Virgo is an earth sign historically represented by the goddess of wheat and agriculture. Wheat. Like the most bland tasting thing in the world. An association that speaks to Virgo's deep rooted presence in the material world. This earth sign is a perfectionist at heart and isn't afraid to improve skills through diligent and consistent practice. Like, it just, um, okay, like y'all are apparently the most boring people in the world. I'm sorry. L let me give you something fun that is in no way logical, practical, or systematic. What I immediately thought of was Haruki Murakami. My favorite being Kafka on the Shore. If you don't know who Haruki Murakami is, he is a Japanese author who mainly writes very surreal, out of the box, unique, 
books. I think that you really need to read his stuff like a free bird and not think too hard about it because there is, it's, um, there's really no rules or boundaries in his books. So Kafka on the Shore is about, um, a boy who leaves his family Bye, and travels north in Japan to live independently away from his abusive father. He's like 15 years old. He ends up working in like an antiquarian library. There also is another character named Nakata. He's like an older man who experienced um, like an alien, <laughs> a question, question mark experience when he was a child that left him in a coma that deeply affected his brain. And he goes on his own separate journey. There's a cat. There's murder. There's love. There's, I think there's incest. There's incest. Um, but yeah, I chose this because I think y'all just need to like let loose a little bit and allow something like this that is so consuming to take you on a journey that you are not, not at all in control of. The next one is Libra. Balance, harmony, and justice define Libra energy. Libra is obsessed with symmetry and strive to create equilibrium in all areas of life, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. I think I also would be disappointed to be a Libra. That's what I recommend is Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Avaristo. This book is about 12 individuals, mainly black British women, who all lead separate lives, although in some way, most of them are connected in some way. And I picked this because it seems quite chaotic throughout. Like you're kind of questioning what these characters have to do with each other, but then in the end, it comes together in such an incredible way and I guess equalizes this very chaotic narrative. The next one is Scorpio, which are apparently elusive and mysterious. They are a water sign that uses emotional energy as fuel, cultivating powerful wisdom through both the physical and unseen realms. The book I picked for this is Heaven by Mieko Kawakami, which is probably not how you pronounce her name, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> I picked this because it is very emotional and evocative. It's really the only book I think that ever, I really don't get like triggered by things. I feel like I have a pretty robust system emotionally, but for this, for some reason, I think I know, well, what it was, okay. This is about a boy in eighth grade who is horribly bullied by these boys in his class. I think what it was for me was like, I wasn't bullied. I don't think I should have been bullied, but I thankfully, I wasn't. I think what it did so well was portray what it feels like to be a child and be so out of control and so unsure of yourself and feel so not grounded. And I, I'm sure that it's a different, I mean, everyone has different childhoods. I would say my childhood, especially like eighth grade, middle school age, to me, that is the worst time ever. This book just reminded me and put me back into those shoes of just being like a stinky 12 year old <laughs> who was so just like frightened and unsure of myself and everyone around me and everything around me. So yeah, the beginning, the, be the beginning, um, the first couple of pages, I, I very nearly stopped. The main character, him and this girl in his class that is also being bullied, they begin exchanging notes. It's so good and it's so, so, so sad. And apparently you, you Scorpios use emotional energy as fuel, so prepare to be filled up. Emotionally. The next one is Sagittarius. You Sagittariuses are fire signs who know no bounds, apparently. You're always on a quest for knowledge. Sagittarius launches its many pursuits like blazing arrows, chasing after geographical, intellectual, and spiritual adventures. In my opinion, the perfect book for this is Educated by Tara Westover, which is a memoir about a woman who was a part of a survivalist family in Idaho. She was raised to believe that the Armageddon was real and was coming. And they needed to prepare. They didn't go to the doctor, never went to school, 
people. They worked in their father's junkyard. A really hard, very abusive life with fear-mongering parents. Although Tara, when she is around 17, she leaves and goes to college and the world opens up to her and this pursuit for knowledge starts, but also just the world and the lies that her mother and father told her are revealed. There's a part in this, in a university classroom, the professor mentions the Holocaust and she raises her hand and says, what is that? She's like 17, 18 years old. That's how forcefully ignorant she was. One of the best memoirs I've ever read. I hope it's not getting too dark. I feel like I should address that. I'm not changing anything. I guess I could. One sec. Capricorn is climbing the mountain straight to the top and knows that patience, perseverance, and dedication is the only way to scale. And apparently y'all are represented by the sea goat. Okay. Bitch, I'm represented by the lion. <laughs> now come on now. <laughs> oh god. The book that I'm gonna recommend is The Brothers K by David James Duncan because it took me quite a bit of perseverance and time to read this book. It's like 600 pages, but the printing is like microscopic. And the beginning of the book as well is, um, if you like baseball, you'll love it. But for me, the first couple hundred pages, like 200 pages is just kind of about baseball. But then after that, it gets so good. It, you really gotta take some time to get into it. But then when you do, the payoff is so good. This is just about a family during like the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They have like five kids and each child ends up taking a very different path in life. It just kind of chronicles this family from the beginning to the end, but it's very realistic. Like it's how a family would grow and change and beliefs change, dynamics change, people get sick, people go to war, but it takes quite a bit of um, you, you really gotta work for it. You've gotta work to experience this book. I think what it is is that there is so much description that it can kind of feel like a slog, but it's necessary because what he's creating is extremely realistic characters and each one is so fully formed that it takes up a lot of pages. <laughs> What's the next one? Okay, we got two more. <sighs> This is hard. Like, I like feel like physically drained. Aquarius, they are innovative, progressive, and shamelessly revolutionary. At the end of the day, Aquarius is dedicated to making the world a better place. What I really focus on here is shamelessly revolutionary. What I got from that was the book Hidden Valley Road by Robert... Robert. Robert Kolker, Inside the Mind of an American Family. This is nonfiction. This is about the Galvin family, Don and Mimi, they're a married couple who end up having 12 kids, spanning the baby boom. So 1945 to 1965, I believe. However, by the mid seventies, six of the 10 Galvin boys are diagnosed with schizophrenia. <laughs> Shit. That was gonna happen. So yeah, so their kids get diagnosed with schizophrenia. And as you can imagine, this revolutionized our understanding of schizophrenia and just mental illness as a whole. Although while diving like so deep into the science of schizophrenia, it also is just about a family, a, a real family who struggled and had to suffer a lot. And this book paints such an incredible picture of each person's life. Although, I mean, for how short it is, you learn so much about each person. The final zodiac sign is Pisces. So Pisces is the most intuitive, sensitive, and empathetic sign of the entire zodiac. As the final sign, Pisces has absorbed every lesson, the joys and the pain, the hopes and the fears learned by all the other signs. It's symbolized by two fish swimming in opposite directions, representing the constant division of Pisces' attention between fantasy and reality. The book, like literally the perfect book for this is Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller. This is a memoir of not just Lulu Miller, but also I guess a, a biography of David Starr Jordan, who was a taxonomist. And I will say, if you do know who David Starr Jordan is, if you know, if you know the tea, <laughs> um, do not 
not read this book because the way that it's structured, you really have to have no clue who David Starr Jordan is besides from him being a taxonomist. It says that Pisces are represented by the two fish swimming away that represent fantasy and reality. And I think in this, Lulu Miller kind of uses David Starr Jordan, who was born in 1851, to tell her story. And I think because David Starr Jordan, his life, or at least the way that she writes his life, it's kind of fantastical and quite mystical. It's so incredibly unique. I also read this book for my book club. I'll have a lot more thoughts on this on my Patreon. And it's just a book club. It's just a very cookie cutter, ordinary book club. I don't know, I've been seeing some stuff saying that we're like a cult? <laughs> or like some weird freaky secret society and we like drink each other's blood and stuff. We don't do that. We don't. Damn. Shut up. Um, in April, we're gonna read Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Which I'm so excited about. And yeah, those are Book Room and Vice Zodiac. I gotta go take a nap because this is like <laughs> so much work. Oh god. Um, see so ya. Yeah. The most technologic tech. I knew I was gonna fuck up that word. <laughs> That also was not a sound effect, that was... My blinds are that loud.